I'll pray for you. Well, talking to yourself is about all you can do because you sure can't win arguments. One last time into the breach, my friends. Here we go. Okay, this is the last one, I promise, at least for this series. Eight videos up and eight videos face down in the dirt. And I had such hope that he might have something worthwhile to say. But as with all apologists, it's just wishful thinking and irrational claims, nothing resembling objective proof or demonstrable evidence. I can't really be surprised, but I can be pretty sad. So here we go again with Evidential University completely failing to defeat atheism. I wonder how they thought they ever could. When you debate an atheist, don't ever say, I'm going to pray for you. Sure, go ahead. It doesn't bother me if you want to talk to yourself about me. It's a waste of time, but it's your time to waste. So, by all means, feel free. All right, he's going to say, seriously going to pray for me? Mock you. I don't. I don't respect it either. I simply recognize that I have no means of stopping you from thinking about me if I cared in the first place, which I don't. So please, do whatever you want to do if it makes you feel better. Knock yourself out. So Dharma says, I'm going to pray for you. If you want to pray for him, let him go or her go. And then when you go to chat or somewhere, you pray for him. If he's a sister, brother, friend, classmate or something. Okay. I'm waiting for you to say something worth responding to. I actually think that this is decent advice. Don't tell someone you're going to pray for them. Just go do it privately and be done with it. But what so many theists do is use prayer like a club. It's like a threat that they issue after atheists fail to take their empty claims seriously. Yeah, your God is going to come and get me. Ooh, I'm so scared. It's just immature. But once you're engaging him, you need to know your stuff. Which you still don't, or you wouldn't believe in this asinine garbage in the first place. Have your evidence around. Which you don't have, nor do you have any idea what evidence is. And then you want to argue dispassionately. Keyword. Argue dispassionately. And use your evidence, your reasoning, your logic to disband his argument. Yeah, good luck on that. Because this is eight videos, and you still haven't backed up anything you have to say with anything remotely resembling objective evidence that your imaginary friend is real. You can't dismantle my arguments until you can prove that your claims are actually so. You probably ought to get on that. Now, most of them don't really know their stuff that well, right? Like I said, you know, they, are, they, they are not into philosophical advanced atheism, right? They are just using what they see on TV, you know, like talking porn, but they don't, most of them don't understand. You are absolutely looking at your own side because your side are the ones who don't understand philosophy. They don't understand science. And they don't comprehend reality. That's why every single religious philosophical claim is fallacious on its face. You have no idea what philosophy can do and what it can't. You just find bad arguments that support your emotionally held beliefs and you cling to them like they make any sense. Newsflash for you, they don't. Those that I engage with are those that are deep, have deep knowledge of their stuff. Which, whether you like it or not, you don't. That's why it's so ridiculously easy to poke these huge gaping holes in your religious beliefs because you have a very narrow and limited knowledge of reality outside of your emotionally comforting blind faith. That's why theists fare very poorly when debating the well-educated atheist who can completely dismantle their empty emotional claims. And when we meet them, then are the best hour off. Now we can engage them. But when you meet your friend, colleague, 
classmate, friend somewhere, right? Then I, then if I say, hey, I'm going to pray for you. Get ready. Prepare your stuff and debate him dispassionately. I have no idea why the religious zealots and apologists don't simply tell their followers to avoid atheists altogether. I mean, it's not like they're ever going to win. It's the ultimate fight against the completely mentally disarmed. If anything, these people need to go hide somewhere to avoid being made fun of by people who can see straight through their mental gymnastics. There is no victory for the religious, only defeat and humiliation. After that, when he's gone, he can go to a bedroom. Go lose pathetically because you have no idea how intelligent thought works when it comes to your religion. And pray for him. Why? You can go hide in your safe space and pretend that you still have a shot, even after he's blown your arguments completely out of the water. Because the God of this world has blinded your mind to so don't understand our gospel. Because you can't figure out that you're wrong, and you won't admit that you were beaten. So maybe, just maybe, your imaginary friend will whoop the atheist's ass. Yeah, I wouldn't be holding my breath. We understand why. Hopefully one day. They will come to our side. I kind of doubt that's going to happen, just like I doubt that the religious zealot is going to wake up one day and realize how ridiculously wrong he's been all along. It's why most religious debates are pointless. You're talking to people who don't speak reality. Thanks for watching again. I am Kojet Sidimanthi for Evidential University, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Well, there is no next time, at least for this series, but there are other things of his that I want to talk about at some point in time. I really had some hope for this series, but it was all dashed in the end. It's the same kind of irrational religious wishful thinking that I see all the time. Mostly, that's because I don't think any religious apologist on the planet has anything better. And that's a sad realization that this is the best they can do. And when you understand just how terrible that actually is, and you won't be seeing anything greater, really, what the heck can you do? It's like picturing a scrawny kid trying to hit a big muscled kid, and the big kid is holding him back by the head. On the one hand, you kind of feel sorry for the puny guy who doesn't know he's going to get his ass handed to him. And on the other, you probably want to see it happen, especially for munchkins who are desperately asking for it. Unfortunately, while there are a lot of theists who are just asking for an intellectual whooping, once they get it even multiple times, they have no idea what the hell just happened. They think they won, even as they're picking themselves up out of the dirt. At some point, it becomes a bit cruel to watch them keep getting knocked down, but they keep coming back for more, so I don't know, maybe they deserve it. What do you guys think? Put your comments below and let me know if you were impressed by anything this guy had to say. I know I wasn't, but yeah, what do I know, right?